Holy shit. Okay, so did you see what happened in the euro dollar futures market yesterday? So, I mean, everybody was focused on the Dow and the euro being down 3%, the pound being down 3%, dogs and cats living together. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Ready to hop in the 6 4 and cruise around the blocks. There's a storm coming to the underworld and the heat is on. Take over the blocks and call the shots. It's time to hustle or get hustled. What's it gonna be? Stay sharp. It's a dog eat dog world out there. Don't let them catch you slipping. Only real gangsters thrive in the dope wars world. Me, I'm a geek. You know how this is. And I also know, Rich, like we've been doing this for years now. You know that I didn't want to have to become a credit spread analyst analyst. And yesterday we were chatting, right, on like the, the my the my the Slack server that I have for my patrons, of which Rich is now one of them, and I, I appreciate that. And he asked about this directly and he's like, what does that all mean? I'm like, I have to like, go back and first grade and explain it all but uh, really it's not even first grade because this is stuff that i only really internalized like two years ago and i've been doing this stuff for 20 years right so okay stop i'm gonna stop you i'm gonna stop you i'm gonna stop Mm -hmm. you so we're gonna start talking about the euro dollars right uh euro dollar market and hopefully at some point um alexander mccuris is going to join us and we're going to talk about what's happening in the uk and italy the italian election which is taking place right now as we're recording this on the 24th of september 2022 and plus we'll cover lots of other stuff but I said to you, oh, and by the way, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Crypto Rich YT, all that business, Crypto Rich Odyssey, Crypto Rich 3 Speak, which is a censorship resistant platform. Right. And not all of this video will be on YouTube because of YouTube censorship. Thank you very much, YouTube. So I said to you that the pound dropped over 3% yesterday. And then you said, look to the euro dollars market. And I'm like, oh my God. You, well, you said, holy shit, look at the euro dollars market. So let's just talk a little bit about that because one of the things that I don't think people realize or they don't dig into, there's all the superficial stuff that the mainstream media presents or the little bits of knowledge mm-hmm. that people pick up, that sort of pretense or the surface stuff. Then there's what's going on in the background that's really running the show. And then what I've learned from listening to you, and thank goodness I'm a patron of your Slack service, such great conversations. I'm learning loads there and getting loads of tips and links. You and me both, dude. Ideas, like, yeah, yeah, those people are very, amazing. Very, very good resource, right? So links in the description below if you want to join uh, Tom's um, Patreon. So the euro dollars, all the offshore dollars outside the United States, and what has been happening is the is Europe has been controlling the interest on the euro on the USD because they've got all these dollars outside the United States through LIBOR. We've got the Federal Reserve raising rates, they set up their own system, so forth. And what they're actually doing is they out to regain sovereignty and control over the dollar. It is their currency after all, right? The euro. So EU has got the euro. What a fabulous, fabulous, wonderful currency that is. Better than gold even, right? I'm being very tongue-in-cheek. If you Facetious, know. completely. Facetious, that's right. Rude even. Rude. So, <laughs> that's great. How un-English of you. How un- in a very British, <laughs> understated way, right? He says, holy shit, I, I make facetious, rude comments, impolite. Do you know what it's like being English? I'm going to quote John Cleese from... A fish called Wanda. Yes. Um, So the euro dollar. No, my wife died last Thursday. Okay, so the euro dollar's curve has inverted, which is a really big deal, apparently. Right now, remember, I'm social worker. No, it is. It is. It it only happens every once in a while. Is that bonds that are paying out in the future are going to give lower rates? Lower rates. Right. Then bonds right now, and that's upside down finance, and that and that's upside down because over over the because normally speaking, the longer you put your money away aside to and forego the use of it, that's the nominal. That's what the whole ar- argument about bond yield curve is about, right? You buy a bond, I give you, I lend you a thousand dollars for three months, right? We write a we write a bond. You know, you're gonna pay, you're gonna give me a bond that's gonna pay three percent interest. Well. You know, the longer the duration of that bond, the more interest I should demand. Yeah. Because it's in because I'm foregoing the use of my money during that time period. So the bond yield curve should always be rising. It may be a, it may be weekly rising, you know, whatever, but it should be rising. And the 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 
slope or the the, the steepness of the curve is a, a gauge of the best way to put it is that it's a gauge of of uh, uh, of trust, right? The, the, if it's a lower steep, if it's if the skirt, if the curve is a low, it, you know, has a has a low rise to it over duration. That yep. means that you know, hey man, I know you're good for it, uh, as opposed to I, I, you know, I only need 25 basis points or 0.25 percent for 10 years over one year, you know. Yep. So that, but when it inverts, is when you, what what it means is that the demand for money now in the short term is greater than the demand for the money in the long term. And people are wanting or need more money, you know, want value their money to between now and two years from now more than they value getting their money back 10 years. And that's why an inversion is ugly. Now in the Euro dollar futures curve. Now hold, hold on a second, hold on a second. Dom. What it also suggests to me is that there's a it could it could be an indicator of panic now. Like a, it's generally used as a recession, as a recession indicator. That if right. the yield curve inverts, we're going to have a recession because people are worried about their near-term financial worries, and therefore they're raising your local currency. It doesn't matter if it's dollars, euro dollars, uh, euros, yen, you know, Vietnamese dong, or or you know, whatever. Right. So that means that people are just worried, and they and they demand a higher return on their money on short-term money than on long-term. Right. That's what that means. Now, when you see that in the money markets, the overnight seven day, three three day, seven day, fourteen day money markets, that's an indicator of oh, there are no dollars, and there's going to be a, and there's and collateral chains are going to start breaking. Derivative people don't have a, a, the money necessary to pay their bills at the end of the week. That's why those things are dangerous. Okay, so watching the short, the ultra short term money markets and looking for breakouts or spasms in rates there is bad okay so that means that demand for money is greater than you know that means that in, in the interbank market that's what LIBOR represents the London interbank over the London interbank uh offer rate right the and it's the overnight interbank offer rate right so L I B O R London interbank offer rate and LIBOR comes into various flavors overnight one month three months six months a year there's a whole yield curve associated with LIBOR Right. When do people need their money back? Um, and it's also the indexing for it's the indexing rate for debt of that same maturity. So your mortgage is going to be indexed to, a, you know, to the longest LIBOR rate that they can come up with. Right. With whatever they're willing to quote, because your mortgage is generally going to be 20 or 30 years. Right. So um, now in the euro dollar futures market, it's a little different because the euro dollar market is the offshore dollar market. It's the dollars that are being held in British banks. Or in the Cayman Islands, or in Brussels, or in Amsterdam, or in Hong Kong, or in Singapore, and there's just euro dollars is just a euphemism for all offshore dollars. Mm. Now, where we are now is so watching the euro dollar markets in the um, in the milieu of Fed the Fed aggressively raising rates, but the U.S. no longer indexing its rate its debt to someone else's interest rate, which in hmm. the, this case used to be LIBOR, okay? We now have our own funding rate. It's called SOFR, SOFR, Secured Overnight Funding Rate. And there's a fundamental difference between LIBOR, Eurobor, HIBOR, all the versions of LIBOR that are, exist, you know, HIBOR in Hong Kong, Eurobor in Europe, blah, 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 is that this is a secured rate. This is a collateralized, this is take. This is a market rate design, the, that is quoted based on securitized transactions. OK, this is a this is a much different rate than what we've seen in the past. OK, so so far is a very big deal. And uh, the latest thing that I've been been thinking about is I don't even want to go off on that tangent. Maybe we'll get to it later. And I haven't really given it a complete thought yet. But so far is the it is not showing any stress and it's not going to show any stress if the U.S. banks are full of reserves. And the U.S. bank and the U.S. money markets are flush with cash, which the Federal Reserve has done a wonderful job of. To, and everybody complains about it. They printed so much money, and there's all this, there's plenty of cash flowing around the, the American money markets. Oh, yeah, well, the mortgage market rates are rising, and other and credit access to capital is rising. That's, that's what you're supposed to do when you want to stamp out inflation, or you want to, you know, put yourself on a sustainable growth path, which we're not on. None of us are on. Okay, 
So, but when the euro dollar futures curve is quoted, it's quoted as 100 minus the expected federal funds rate at that moment in time on the curve, right? So if, you know, if the market expects the Fed to be at 2% in September of next year, then the euro dollar futures market will reflect that by trading at 98 on the, on the September 23 maturity. Um, because that's in September of 23, people are expecting that the Fed funds rate will be 2%. And so they're trading around that rate. And so that's a market rate. It's a market expected, ex, uh, expected rate. So watching moves in the euro dollar futures curve, usually it used to in the past, used to tell you exactly what the Fed was going to do. Because when there was an inversion, that would tell you when the Fed was going to stop raising rates. Because the market was saying, the Fed, you need to stop raising rates by March of next year. and you need to start lowering rates. And so when the curve starts to go back up, that means that the Fed is expected to lower interest rates. That used to be the tail wagging the dog in the past. Now, it's just a spec bet. Now it's just people speculating on where the Fed's going to be. It doesn't have the same power it used to. This is the fundamental key. And I've argued this on Twitter with people who are far fam- more famous than I am. Saying, well, I trust the euro dollar futures curve more. I'm like, why? SOFR exists now. Yeah. And we're not tied, and the US banks aren't tied to LIBOR. And the London banks can't manipulate LIBOR in order to cause stress in the US money markets anymore. And all of a sudden you the conversation stops. I'm like, oh well, activate next clone. Like, yeah, obviously. Okay, picked you off, activate next clone. So who's next? Right, it's a par- it's a paranoia reference to a, a classic RPG, and anybody who's an RPG geek knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so, and I don't mean to be arrogant about this, but this is the reality. This is, you know, I, I may come across as arrogant, well, because I am, but I don't mean to be. I mean to actually engage and challenge people as much as possible because I want the truth. I want to understand what's going on, and I don't. And it's you know, resting on our laurels is only going to get us get us bushwhacked in the, in this financial environment. Okay. Case in point, the last three weeks, the last three days of trading. Oh my God, the last three days, the last three days, which brings us into what I said earlier about what happened to the. I mean, yesterday I was looking at the US dollar, euro, and the US dollar pound, cable, US dollar pound, and also the pound against gold and pound against the euro, and then looking at looking at how it's playing out in the UK, and we'll be talking about that, and also how it's likely to play out in Europe. We got the Italian elections happening today, and I just want to say we're going to move over onto Odyssey. And one thing to acknowledge, certainly for me, this conversation, this bit of the video has been very, very, I suppose, financially technical. But we, what we are going to be talking about is the effect on what this means. Or, yeah, on people at, at a, I suppose, you know, people like me, because it's going to have no, seriously, my friends and family. It really is, and also what's going to happen at the macro level, and you know, for the EU, because I think it's more fishers in the EU, which is going to crumble. So I'm going to have all the links in the description below. Come over to Odyssey, bit.ly slash crypto rich Odyssey. It takes a little bit longer for the videos to get up onto three speak. And uh, if you're watching this on Rumble, you'll have to come over to Odyssey to see part two as well. Okay. All right. All right, Tom, see you over Mm -hmm. in Odyssey.